Hello everyone. You are welcome to dance with us. <laughs> we'll give it a few minutes before everyone can join. Already a lot of people joining in. That's awesome. I love what is this that we're listening to anyway? What is this song? That is a very good question. Let me check. Um, close to you from Day Glow. Hi, Melanie. It's great to be with you today. How are you? I think every Thursday calls for like a, a little dance party. <laughs> it's almost Friday, almost the weekend. <laughs> yeah. It's lunchtime for the Eastern time zone. So if you want to take some lunch and enjoy the webinar while eating some great food, feel free to do so. Hello from Yatin in Poon, India. Wow. Dinner time here. Yep. Here too. Yay. And so actually, actually, so breakfast here. <laughs> Catherine, where are you joining us from? Lunchtime. So actually, yeah, let us know where you're joining us from. Petaluma. So I am personally based in Montreal. I'm actually from Belgium, but uh, here I am in uh, this beautiful city in Canada. Where are you based, Ashley? I'm just outside of Boston. So I grew up in Wisconsin, in case there are any Midwest people, Tiara's in Illinois. Um, but I've been in Boston now for 12 or 13 years. So it's it's lunchtime for me here too. But for lunch, I'm just having coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some water because yes. I know that you're gonna speak more than I will. <laughs> exactly. All right, so I'll put my headphones on and we can get started. Let's see here, but that was a great way to to start. Yeah. I love the music. That was like really <laughs> it was kind of calming and it was like a good energy. I liked it. Absolutely. So Philippines, wow, we have people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Nova Scotia, Los Angeles. Cool, very cool. So um, hi everyone and welcome to this fireside chat with Ashley Levesque on how to run a webinar that doesn't suck. So as um, as we said, I'm based in Montreal. Ashley just said that she was, she was based in Boston. If you just joined, please, I would uh, love to know where you're joining us from. I think we have people from, and from everywhere in the world, mostly America, but uh, we have people from all regions joining. That's awesome. How are you feeling, Ashley? Are you I'm excited? Great. Yeah, I'm so excited. I took a quick glimpse through the amazing questions that people have been asking, and I am I love it. I'm so excited to talk webinars. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. So I uh, will let Ashley introduce herself first. Hello. Who are you, Ashley? Tell us more. <laughs> My name is Ashley. I'm the VP of Marketing. Um, I work at a company called Bonsai. So Bonsai recently acquired Demio. So if you're used to seeing either Bonsai's brand or Demio's brand, they are now one and the same, um, which is why we have Bonsai slash Demio here. And in case you don't, you're not familiar with either uh, product, Demio is what we're on right now. So this is a webinar hosting platform, the best webinar hosting platform, if I may say so myself. And Bonsai also has another really awesome product called Bonsai Reach, which helps you get the people that you need onto your event um, through a really cool audience AI that we have kind of on the back end. And then Demio's product helps you engage those qualified people. So i um, really excited to be here and talk more about webinars. Awesome. Well, you can say that it's the best uh, webinar platform because I've been running a lot of virtual events and here I am using yours. So, you know, action is uh, is more valuable than words. 
And so I am Thomas Paris, the director of marketing at Hopier. I also believe that it's an, an amazing platform and it's different. It's a, it's a platform for virtual events, but it's not a virtual events platform. So we help event planners to increase engagement before, during, and after the virtual events by making it super easy to distribute smart digital visa cards to anyone in the world to remote attendees so that they can buy lunch, drinks, and, and gifts wherever they are located. So if you want to add any sort of physical experience or phys physical elements to your virtual events, Hopier is just an amazing way to do so. So um, very excited to be here as well. Very excited to be with Ashley, uh, AKA the queen of webinars and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find this valuable. So a little bit of um, housekeeping. So uh, this webinar is being recorded, but if it's not, if it's uh, not your first webinar with Harpier or with Demio, you know that only you, because you have showed up, will get the recording. You can use the chat to ask questions or engage with fellow attendees or you know uh, engage with us. Be on the lookout for polls and even handouts, and we'll have a few gifts for you at the end. So stay with us until the end, otherwise you will, you will miss them. And my beloved attendees, I have a question for you first and then I will um, get back to you, Ashley. But we have a question for you and it is, um, how often do you actually one run webinar? So um, go in the poll section and so you have chat, polls, handouts here in Demio. Please go to the poll section and answer. Is it several per month, once a month, less than once a month, or you've never hosted a webinar and you would like to get started? So it's mainly several per month. Okay, we have yeah. very engaged people here. Super interesting to know that. Awesome. So. Most of the 50% run several webinars per month. So that's interesting. A few have not yet hosted a webinar. So hopefully we'll help you get started. Yeah. Thank you for answering that poll. And now let's get down to business. Ashley, we, I know you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, maybe there are some more people here who know you also, but we would like to know you better. So please tell us something that not that many people know about you. So not that many people know that I have a master's degree in musical theater. Oh. So this will become apparent, I think, over the course of this session together. But I used to be an actress. And uh, now I'm in marketing and they're the same thing for me in my mind, the way of, um, you know, how we communicate stories, how we connect with our audience, um, you know, how we're passionate about uh, our, the, the beginning, the middle and the end. So for me, the, the, the jump makes a lot of sense. For other people, it's, it's quite a shock. So that is something that not a lot of people know. No, but it's I like um, I just found out about about what you just said. Huh? I didn't know that uh, <laughs> she wanted to keep that uh, um, a, 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 a big surprise for me. But I, it's not that surprising by the fact that I've always found that your communication skills and your soft skills are amazing. So wow. it's a surprise, but it's not that surprising yeah. that you were an actress before. Totally. Awesome. Um, now to the actual content of this webinar. The first question I have for you, Ashley, and it's a question that I um, that I have because I always like to get practical and use like concrete examples when we talk about things and we talk about complicated topics. So my first question to you is, what has been the most successful webinar that you've organized and what drove its success? Yeah, I love this question. And I think it's really important to get 
tactical as well so that people can kind of take what we're providing and actually apply it, right? We don't want to just give theoretical kind of ideas. We want to be able to provide tangible, actionable things that other marketers can go implement. So I run a lot of webinars, but I'm going to talk about one just from a couple months ago that, that was really powerful for us. So in April, we ran a webinar called, I just want to get the name right, how to run a webinar so people won't leave in the middle. And that was exactly the title of the webinar. Um, we used only organic means to promote the webinar. So we did not do any paid advertising. Uh, we promoted for about two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks, no more than that. And we received over 630 registrants. Um, and we had about a 25% attendance rate on that. Now, the content of the webinar itself, you can probably glean from the title, right? We literally talked about how do you keep people on your webinar? How do you keep them engaged? How do you create more interactive experiences? How do you implore your attendees to contribute and participate so they are a part of the experience? And I think the reason that that was so successful is because it was the question people were asking at that time. It's the question people are still asking. But one of the really important things that we have to remember as webinar producers and hosts and presenters is we're not creating webinar topics for us. We can't just pick out ideas out of the air and think, hmm, I think this might be really great. We have to, we have to create content based on what our audience needs, right? And we were getting questions, I was getting questions every day. How do I make this more engaging? How do I make sure people aren't bailing on, on my webinar? And so we had this really cool meta experience where I was hosting a webinar about how to host a webinar where people don't leave. And I implored them to stay with me and I showed them all of the ways that they could as a host do the same things that I was doing as a host. So it was really, really powerful. And I think the, the real reason was because we were speaking directly to a need that our audience had. And um, from that, we were able to generate customers and trials and all sorts of good stuff. But most importantly, we provided a lot of value. I love that. There is a follow-up question here by Melanie. So a question makes a great webinar title. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, yes. I'm going to talk a little bit more about topics in um, later on in this session, but I really implore people to create webinar titles that are provocative, that are different, that are um, that are a question, that give you a sense of the company and the brand, and um, maybe are a little silly or use language that's different, right? That gives us insight into who you are and why why am I going to spend an hour with these people, right? Why am I going to spend half an hour with these people? We want to get a little sense of that from the title because that's also going to make sure people stay. Because if your title is something different than what happens on your webinar, so this happens a lot, right? People set up a title, people set up a description, and then attendees get on the webinar and the content is something totally different. Your attendees are going to bail. People are going to leave your webinar if you are not setting the right expectations for what your webinar is going to be about. And you're going to break their trust. So don't do that. <laughs> so yes, Wendy, I love, love, love that question. I think that that is right on. Makes a great webinar title. I love what you just said, Ashley. And um, you know, we run also a lot of different virtual events, a lot of webinars. And I think you know, nailing the webinar topic, the webinar title is probably one of the most important things to do. So I'll always spend a lot of time asking clients what's top of mind, asking our customer success team, asking our sales team, hey, what are the biggest challenges right now? Because as you said, if you don't get that right, no matter how good your promotion is, no matter what platform you're going to use, if people don't really care about your content, then there is no chance that it's going to work. So thank you for sharing that. Exactly right. All right. So if you remember at, on the Hopier side, I mean, on the webinar um, sign up page, we had one question where you could actually ask a question to Ashley. And so thank you for sharing so many questions. We decided to pick a few. And the first question is this one. 
what are the top three pre-event steps and the top three post-event steps for an event team? I love this question. And because I don't follow directions, I did four instead of three steps. So there's two checklists here on the screen. And these are actual handouts that Thomas will provide for everyone. So you can actually tangibly take this. Again, you know, I'm all about the tangible and actionable. Um, you can download these and use them yourself as sort of a template for what you should be doing when you're running these, these events. So thank you. You should see them in the handout section now. Thanks so much, Thomas. Um, so first, the checklist for getting started with webinars. There's four pieces here for what you need to do. And this is really good, by the way, for all of, all of you who said you've never run a webinar before. This is your playbook. For all of you who said, I'm running them often, this is still your playbook, okay? So number one, the very first thing you need to do when you're getting ready to build a webinar is design a webinar goal that impacts a business goal. Do not collect go, do not collect $200. <laughs> this is number one. You have to do this first because your webinar is designed to impact your business. And if you wanna show your executive leadership team that marketing has a stake in this quota, in this revenue, we as marketing leaders wanna drive impact, right? We have to be able to attribute that back to the actions we're doing. Webinars are an easy way to do that but only if you are actually connecting your webinar to a high level business goal that has KPIs and metrics to help you know if you got there. I'll show you an example of that later on, don't worry. But that's number one. Number two, you have to know your desired outcome of your audience. So desired outcome is what your audience wants to achieve and how they want to achieve it. Now I have a little hint here in pink, and this is really important. Your desired outcome of your audience is probably not what you're selling, okay? This is really important. So let's take Demio as an example. Demio is a beautiful, seamless, clean, browser-based webinar platform. And we target marketers, right? Marketers who are running webinars. That's my targeted audience. Now when marketers, who are running webinars wake up in the morning, what they think about first is not, I need a webinar platform. <laughs> as much I, I, as sorry, sorry to interrupt, but when I wake up, it's all I think about, sorry. I mean, it's all I think about, if I'm being honest, but I recognize that is not what marketers need and want, right? Marketers want to meet their business goals. Marketers want to get promoted. Marketers want to look good in front of their executive leadership team. And the way they do that is by building marketing campaigns, building marketing content that actually impacts their business goals, right? They've, they've got revenue goals. They've got quarter goals. They've got, in some businesses, lead generation goals or whatever it is. Marketers want to hit those, right? Because they want to look good. So what I need to keep in mind as I'm marketing to this audience is what they want. They want to feel confident. They want to look good. They want to get promoted. And so my marketing content is, is funneled with that in mind. And what that helps me do is create content that's not about me, right? I don't want to create content that's about how amazing Demio is if that's not what my target audience needs in that moment. My target audience needs to learn how to feel confident in creating webinars maybe. They need to learn how to level up their skills, how to meet quota, how to make sure that they know how to measure their goals. So that's the kind of framework that we need to start with. Too many webinars, and this is just a fact, and I know you all know this because you are, you are definitely attending webinars where this is the case, I know I am. Too many webinars are sales focused, right? And it, that's not to say that you can't sell on a webinar. However, you have to make sure that your audience is at the point where they're ready to be sold to. Otherwise, all you're doing is talking about yourself, talking about yourself, not giving your audience what they need, and then wondering, hmm, I wonder why they didn't convert to a customer, right? So you have to think about their desired outcome first. Then what you do, once you know that, 
you can create a webinar topic that brings them a little closer to that desired outcome. So for example, a lot of marketers I talk to struggle with confidence when it comes to webinars, because webinars are really overwhelming. They can be really overwhelming. And so a lot of marketers I talk to, especially marketers on small teams, they're like, we don't have the money. We don't have the resources. I don't have a bandwidth. I'm, I'm a marketer. You know, I'm doing five jobs in one. How am I supposed to build a webinar strategy? So I create content about that. I create a webinar topic called how small marketing teams can generate revenue using webinars how to be a confident webinar presenter, how to feel um, better about the content you're putting out in the world. I don't know, I just spitballed all of those. But the point is now creating a webinar topic becomes a lot easier because your webinar is designed to bring them from one state to the other. It's designed to bring them from a state of, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling not confident, I'm not feeling good about this, and I'm not really bought into the fact that I even need to be doing webinars, to a place that's a little closer to, okay, I'm feeling, I, I'm on board, I'm interested in learning more about this. It might not be all the way to the place of I'm sold, reel it in. It might just be a little closer, which is okay. That's the point of your webinar. It's to bring them a little closer. I call it the webinar arc. Your webinar is designed to bring them to a new state of being. That's your purpose. And then number four, once you've got that set up, you have to just promote where your target audience is. So you've already determined who these people are and what they want. <laughs> trying to get in my camera. To who these people are and what they want. Now you have to show up where they are. And that's going to depend greatly on who they are and what your business is and what their desired outcome is. And we'll talk a little bit more about promotion strategies. But those are the four things to get started. Now, before I move on to the after the webinar, I want to just take a break, see if there's any questions. Are people um, people following so, along? Are people on board with what I'm saying? I am following along and I'm actually like swallowing every word that you just said. That was uh, that was really amazing. Oh, Faye, yeah. One thing, Faye, so can you hear actually now? I wanted to ask that. So is anybody having trouble hearing what Ashley is saying? Yeah, if you're having trouble, um, I recommend just refreshing your browser. Is he muted? No. <laughs> now you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> he's not no muted. No clear sound. Yeah, go ahead and refresh your browser if you're having um, sound issues. Yeah, you can refresh. So yeah, I love what you just said about um, having, you know, like not being too salesy or when you are salesy, it also depends on your audience and, and how far in, in that conversion funnel you are with them. It's like, that's what I've also tried to understand is like, what should be my event type based on what the goal is and the goal meaning what is the next stage? You know, it's like, okay, um, people don't know me. I'm running this, you know, large scale event and it's probably going to be a, a large scale um, conference, for example, so that more people know about me. And the only goal is like to get people to know your brand or to add some value. But when you run webinars, you can have smaller scale events. And then it's always about, okay, if I'm running this webinar, um, again, I have my, my persona in mind, but I also have to keep in mind from that uh, from that audience, how far along they are in our conversion journey. Like, have they already engaged with with some content? Have they already like booked calls with our sales team? And and we, I'm just trying to have another webinar topic where um, I'm trying to re-engage those those sleeping leads. And so, I would say it's okay. You know, from what I let let me know if I'm saying something crazy, but it's it's um, it can be okay to have a salesy kind of virtual event or fireside chat, as long as you're targeting people who you have already started a relationship with and, and yes. that, that are not complete strangers. Yeah, absolutely. And this is just basic sales tactics that we need to adopt on the marketing side. You know, in the same in the same way that most salespeople don't pick up the phone out of nowhere and just say, do you want to buy my product? Right. Um, on the first date, you're not saying, do you want to get married, right? So we part of what marketers need to adopt <laughs> is this, this 
this new engagement marketing, right? We are responsible for also building these relationships, for building trust, for building loyalty, for building brand recognition, and for making sure that we're helping sales once they are ready for that next step. It's exactly right, Thomas. I love the way you put that. Cool. Um, any questions from the audience on that part? I think... Uh, yeah, I think so. Just to reiterate, I think I'm just going to read what Faye wrote here. I think webinars feel like a one night stand for me. That's a big turnoff. Someone just using me for their personal gain. It feels sleazy. It's OK if someone wants to sell to me, but I at least want to know that the presenter is not just gathering souls to buy from them and benefit from them. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. And this is why we need to think differently about the way we're running webinars. And that's that's why I think that that webinar arc is going to be really helpful for webinar presenters because it puts us as the business, as the product out of focus and puts the customer back in focus so that we are not sleazing to you. <laughs> we're actually giving you the things that you need. So yeah, perfect. Um, let me move on to the post webinar checklist and then we can maybe do a couple other questions. So, um, all right, after your webinar is over, you just did this beautiful, you had your four steps, you did your webinar, you did a great job engaging them, talking to them in the chat, just like we're doing. And now after your webinar is over, you wanna go into your webinar analytics and pick out the people who were most engaged. So you wanna find out, for example, here on Demio, we can see who downloaded the assets that we handed out, those handouts, those checklists, who engaged in those polls, who wrote the, uh, you know, the highest number of messages in the chat. Those who are most engaged might be ready for the next step. And again, your next step doesn't have to mean sales. Your next step might be adding them to an email subscriber list or inviting them to another webinar. Or maybe it is sales, but that's that's not for you to decide. That's for the customer to decide. So you do need, though, to identify who was most engaged during your webinar so that you can help them on toward their journey, toward their desired outcome. Set up a pathway for them that's going to help get them closer to where they want to go. Then... Thomas, uh, Thomas talked about this as well. We're gonna send the recording out to everybody here who attended with a clear call to action, a clear next step. Do you wanna join our email list? Do you wanna sign up here to receive more invitations for webinars? Do you wanna check out this next event we have coming up? Whatever it is to help people take that next step. And again, to identify who's ready to do so, right? Number three, you got to set up the reporting in case you haven't done that already to check and see if you hit those webinar goals you made at the front. So remember, number one, you're going to design a webinar goal that aligns with your business goal. Now here you have to evaluate, did I hit it, right? If my goal was something um, sales oriented, maybe I am converting a certain number of customers or a certain number of trials. Go back and find out if you did it. Make sure that you know how to identify if you've made progress against your goal. If your goal was something like email subscribers, make sure that you have the structure set up in your marketing automation or whatever it is where you can clearly identify here are the number of new email subscribers that came from this webinar, right? That's number three. And then number four, which is my go-to, especially for small marketing teams who don't have a lot of bandwidth, you have to put your content on demand. It is the easiest way to continue to provide value and generate leads, like literally while you're sleeping. It also helps you make sure that you're repurposing the content. You worked so hard creating that goal, creating the topic, identifying the right audience, Maybe you built slides. Maybe you made new videos. You worked so hard doing that. Don't let that go to waste just because the live part of your content is over. Repurpose it. Turn it into blog posts. Turn it into videos. Turn it into checklists. Turn it into on-demand recordings. It helps 
expand the potential of your content so that you also don't feel like you have to consistently be doing live webinars if you don't have the bandwidth, resources, or time to do it. So that's my number four. Any other questions? about that there are a lot of questions it's pretty well, impressive yeah. and and thank you for sharing all these insights uh, actually I'm, I'm learning like crazy i hope other people are also learning um let's see so this is perfectly followed up with any other questions so we have a few actually which one would you like to answer i just saw melanie so i just wanted to send her a quick like go do it um, your energy is contagious for sure <laughs> Um, explain on-demand use of content in more detail. Okay, so on-demand is a type of webinar that uses pre-recorded content instead of live content. So for example, when this live webinar is over, Thomas is gonna be able to download an MP4 video of this live session. So he now has in his possession recorded content that he can use to do with as he pleases. He can use to snip that up into little mini social media videos and continue to promote that content far and wide. He can use it maybe to create a new lead magnet. Maybe he's going to distill all of the things we talked about here today into an ebook. Maybe he's going to distill it into a blog post with a different call to action. Um, certainly what I think Thomas will probably do is take that video, create a new webinar that's on demand. And what on demand means is instead of it having a set date and time like this one did, it was July 8th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. This is on demand. So it's more like Netflix. So it, you register when you when you register for the event, you're immediately brought into the event and you can see it in real time. What's powerful about on demand webinars is you are gathering your audience in the moment they are most excited about you, right? Because as soon as they register, they're gain, they've gained access to the content, which is different than a live TV special, like this live event, where you have to wait. You register for the event, and then you add it to your calendar, and you wait for that date and time. And over the course of waiting, you, as the attendee, might lose interest, or you might get busy, or you might forget, and there's a greater opportunity potentially for drop off. But if you get them right when they're most excited, they are more likely to watch that content and engage with it. So that's what on demand is. And I highly recommend that everyone does them. They're easy. Mm. Super clear explanation. And um, I actually love the idea of, you know, having this, uh, this long video that we snip it up, snip it up into smaller pieces of content. We actually used to do that for our podcast that we stopped a few months ago, but it just reminded me that that was so powerful to easily, you know, out of one long form piece of content, create like five, 10, 20 shorter form uh, piece of content that, that you can feed your, your, you know, your blog with, your social media platforms, your YouTube channel. That's so powerful. If you want to have an example of what like on demand, I don't know um, of on-demand um, um, webinars look like. I don't know if you have that on, on Demio, but we have that on Hopier. If you go to hopier.com and you go to resources, webinars, we have this on-demand webinar. So we always have the upcoming webinar, but then we, we can also um, use those those past webinars as on-demand uh, lead generation form. So that, that help us to generate leads at any time in the year. Yep, I just dropped a link to our on-demand landing page as well, so you can go check out what they look like and see exactly how they work. Um, yeah, I think that I think that's great. Should we keep moving? We should keep moving. I want to be um, I want to be mindful of everybody's time, so we might skip one question, but it's all good. Um, as we said, I think in the beginning of this webinar, they and a few people mentioned that in the chat is like it's a crowded market right? It's a red ocean. There are so many virtual events that are free. Um, so basically, how do you stand out? How do you create an effective communication promotion strategy that will get you a lot of people and hopefully the right people uh, to sign up? 
Yes, great question. So I'm gonna go back to basics again, because one, I think repetition is helpful, but also I wanna drive the point home that everything you do, all efforts you make in relation to your webinar depend upon you setting up your webinar with the right framework. So what I mean by that is your promotion strategies, tactics, channels, paid ads, organic, LinkedIn, emails, none of that will matter if you don't know who you're targeting and if you don't know what they want. And that's just true. <laughs> so if you, if you find yourself struggling to get attendees, if you find yourself struggling to get registrants, go back to the building blocks. Go back and identify what are the main objections in the sales process that I could talk about? What are the main, what's the number one question that my success team answers on a daily basis in the support desk? These are things that are, are starting to illuminate areas where your audience needs to be educated, where your audience is asking questions that, that they want you to answer. And you should do it in a webinar format. So you have to start with those two. Once you have your desired outcome known, you've got the right topic, you know your audience, where you promote is going to depend on where they are. So this is going to change based on industry um, and certainly based on who your target audience is. But I have a couple of tips. So number one, when it comes to email marketing, I'm a big fan of email marketing. If you have an email list and if the people you're trying to target are segmented inside your database, make sure they're getting invitations through email marketing. The other thing that I always recommend is if you're doing a partner webinar, like here Thomas and I are kind of coming together, two different companies to talk together, leverage each other's promotion. So here's a great example. Thomas and I sat down and we said, how should we promote and what will our promotion schedule be? I said, here's what I'm gonna do. Here are the dates I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do some social media. I'm gonna do uh, maybe an intercom banner on top of my website, we use intercom. I'm gonna do email marketing. Maybe I'm gonna do some paid ads, et cetera, et cetera. Thomas said, here's what I'm gonna do. So now we've just leveraged each other's promotion networks and we've spider webbed out our ability to promote and get the word out. So instead of it just being me and my company, instead of it just being Thomas and his company, we've leveraged each other. And that has multiplied the area, right? So you gotta do that. The other thing that I always recommend, this goes in line with how we talked about doing topics and titles that are a little bit more provocative, a little bit out of the box. You have to use videos for your promotion. Hard stop. Images get left behind. Nobody's paying attention to images anymore. You have to do videos. Videos make people stop scrolling. Thomas and I did a video together. And if you saw that video, what you learned from the video was a little bit about my energy, a little bit about Thomas's energy. You learned a little bit about what we were gonna talk about. We made you a promise on what this content was gonna be about. And that gives the attendees a better understanding of what to expect so that they don't show up and be disappointed. We set expectations in that video. We said, here's me, <laughs> here's Thomas, here's what you're gonna learn, here's what we're gonna talk about, period. And it was just a way that we could use that video then in our promotion assets. We used it on social media, we used it on the landing page, we used it in paid ads. It was just one more way that we could kind of spider web that out. One more um, thing that I always suggest is depending on where your webinar is in your sales cycle, in your marketing funnel, one-on-one -on -one invitations from your sales team could be really powerful here. If you're doing a, a, a more bottom of funnel webinar, a more sales oriented webinar, and you've got a couple of VIP customers that are hard to close, your sales team has been working on them for a long time, give them a one-on-one -on -one invitation. Make sure, you know, this goes back to sourcing the topic. If you're hearing sales objections coming up over and over and over again, and you're finally gonna do a webinar topic about those sales objections, go back and invite 
all of the people who had that objection. Hey, John. Hey, Andy. Hey, Sarah. You specifically had this objection when we talked to you last time. We want to address this for you. Would, you. would you join us for this live opportunity where we can talk about this? Boom. You've gained some trust. You might have gained some customers. And you're following up to make sure that this is full cycle, right? You're coming back to your customers and prospects when they say, I have a problem here. You're saying, great, I have the solution. That's our job, right, is to provide solutions to the problems. So those are just a couple couple ideas. I mean, I have millions of ideas, but I want to be respectful of time and, and just see. Um, thank you. Yeah, Thomas listed the video. Awesome. <laughs> are there any other um, questions that I can answer about, about promotion? Uh, I think Faye asked about timing, a lot like lead time. I think that's always interesting to kind of understand. So how long does it take um, to prepare to present the webinar in a way that I know my that my audience wants? So do you have do you have any insight in terms of lead times for an effective webinar strategy? For how long to promote it? Yeah. So well, yeah. At, at Demio, we do two and a half to three weeks. That is our standard promotion schedule. Um, if we are doing a webinar that is more um, bottom of funnel, or it's, for example, if we're doing a feature release, if we're doing some kind of customer communication, if we're identifying something that's going to be an overhaul to our product, we'll do a longer lead time because we want to make sure that everyone has the chance to see that and is up to speed. But if it's a top of funnel webinar, for example, that one that I shared at the beginning, how to run a webinar so people won't leave in the middle. That was two and a half weeks, three weeks. Um, the other thing I always recommend with a promotion strategy and a promotional calendar is actually write it down. So many people sort of have this off the cuff, yeah, I'll post on LinkedIn one day and maybe another day I'll do an email, but it's not documented, it's not organized, and it's, it's not repeatable that way. Write it down, create a template for yourself that you can copy from webinar to webinar and learn from, from webinar to webinar, so that you're always using the same methods that work. You don't have to recreate the wheel every time. So I hope that answers the question. That's perfect. Great. I wanna, um, I wanna, oh yes, that I like. Um, yeah. I would like everyone to share something that you have learned today in the chat. Can be a tactic. It can be, can be more high level. Please yeah, go to the chat that. and share something that you've learned today with us. To be the energy you want. Yeah. Yes. This is my 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 other number one tip that I always give is, if you want to have an engaging webinar, you have to have engaging hosts. Period. And it is our responsibility as webinar creators to make sure that we are finding the people in our organization best suited to do webinars. It might not be who you think it is. <laughs> it might be your CEO. It might not be your CEO. You want to find the person who is your best communicator, your most, your most excitable, your most energetic, Maybe it's your subject matter expert. Maybe it's not. This is another way for you to shake up the way we think about webinars is to really be mindful about who's the one running the show, because that is going to make a big difference. You guys remember Ferris Bueller, um, that professor up at the front of the board, Bueller, Bueller, <laughs> all boring, right? Bueller, so boring. I would not watch a webinar like that. Even if I thought the content was going to be so good and the slides were so beautiful, I don't want to listen to that for an hour. I just don't. I don't want to listen to it for 20 minutes. So you have to be mindful about that as well. Awesome. Um, so awesome that people have learned so much. I think what came up is um, that repurposing strategy uh, is something that people have learned. Uh, having this on-demand webinar to to get leads and and I mean so many things that we have learned today. My last question before we show you the price that we have for you, lovely attendees, not registrants, um, is this one actually, and I think it's an important one because it doesn't matter if you want to run webinars, you're going to have to pitch it to someone, right? Because un unless you have enough resources, 
um, already, uh, but usually even to get those resources, you need to understand, you need to explain to your manager, to your boss, hey, this is how I'm going to use them. And so I would love to understand what would you say to your boss or to your manager if he would, or he or she, sorry, uh, would enter um, your that, that room and say, hey, why should we even invest in webinars? Why is that an interesting project to invest in? Yeah, I love this question because again, this is tangible in real life, right? Everyday marketers have to make a proposal for why they want to buy a new platform or um, they have to <laughs> let go of one tech platform to, to bring another one on board. So I, I love this question. I have two answers for us. The first answer is the reason why we have to make a pitch to invest in webinars is because your competitors already are, period. So Ring Central released a stat that said 67% of marketers have increased their webinar investment since COVID, 67%. So at face value, that means that two thirds of your competitors are investing more in webinars than they were a couple years ago. And they're talking to your target market. So at, at the very least, we're losing ground, we're ceding ground to our competition just because we're not in the game, right? We just have to get in the game. So that's number one. The other thing is, and this is something that I say all the time, webinars are the most powerful tool in a marketer's toolbox. And the reason is because they are the two-way communication channel that actually enables relationship and trust building. So anyone who's not new to business knows that you can't sell without a relationship, right? We talked about this before. Salespeople are not calling on, on day one and saying, do you want to buy my thing, right? You have to build a relationship. You have to invest. And unfortunately, a lot of the channels that marketers have access to are one-way communication channels. Social media, to an extent, is one way, right? Because it's not live and engaging. I'm posting something, maybe people will comment, but it's hard to build a relationship that way. Blog posts, one way, right? Even email marketing, to an extent, is one way. Webinars are live. We are having a real conversation here, not just Thomas and myself, but all of us. You're having a conversation with each other. You're asking questions. You're answering questions. And we have to remember, not, not only is this true for marketers, this is true for sales as well. They need to build relationships. It's, 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 a, it's a core part of their competency, right? And regardless of when and if in-person events come back, we need to remember that COVID changed the way we do business holistically. Uh, businesses have gone fully remote in their hiring practices. Businesses that used to have to fly a sales rep to California to close the deal now can do it in a virtual setting. And so the fact of the matter is that webinars and virtual platforms like this they're not going away because we have learned over the past year, 18 months of doing these, being forced to do these, that they actually drive value, that they actually um, help us close the deal, help us build the relationship, help to make sure that we still have a human connection, even in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, what's more powerful than that? So the question isn't even about what are we going to do you know when COVID goes away when in-person events come back we all want in-person events come back webinars are never going away and it's because businesses are never going to go back to the way that they were before COVID. and so we just have to get on board we just have to we just have to remember as marketers that our primary job is to build relationships that make sales easier that's our job and webinars are the channel to do it Thank you so much. Um, I think what I'll, you know, one of the things that I love that you just said is, um, you know, we always talk about quantitative metrics, right? Leads, sales, 
and how we can link webinars or virtual events to those metrics. One thing that I just you know remember and that really resonated with me is the fact that it's one of the only kind of two-way communication channel. And you're right, like we always run ads, write emails, build landing pages, whatever. But that's always a one a one way communication uh, channel. And and you know, we have to be, I mean, as, especially as marketers, we have to be close to our audience. We have to understand what's top of mind, what it, what the challenges are, who they are. And and they also, I mean, or these people in our audience, they have to see and understand who we are to build relationships. And, and as we know, uh, people are more likely to trust and buy from people that they like and that they can relate with. So having this kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction during webinars, I think is such a powerful way to build connections and get qualitative insights that will help, you know, make those quantitative metrics much better. So thank you so much for sharing. I want to, I want to um, again, be mindful of everybody's time and go to or the next phase of this. I feel like there are a few things that uh, have been left here in the slides. Okay, here we go. So we have a few gifts for uh, you and I will let Ashley start. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. I know that we haven't been able to answer all your questions because you were so engaged. So that was um, that was really. Um, what happened? I think we lost Ashley. It's okay. Um, I mean, we we lost her screen. Are you still there, Ashley? Uh, am I still there? One, yeah, two, we're both two. here. Okay. Wow. Uh, I've like my 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 whole screen was white for. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Sometimes network connectivity. Who knows? But let okay. me let me talk a little bit about this because I'm so excited. Yes. Go ahead. So, we talked a lot about um, checklists and tools to make you successful in in running webinars. And like Thomas said, we we didn't have a chance to get through everyone's questions, and we never would because there's so many questions. Everyone you know asked questions when they registered. We've been having brilliant questions here in the chat. Um, one quick thing I do want to say, we want to keep this conversation going. So please find me on LinkedIn, find Thomas on LinkedIn, please email us. You know, we definitely, definitely want to um, continue to connect with you. One thing that I want to give everyone to help with this is a master webinar planning toolkit. Now, listen, this is the best thing you will ever get. And I'm just being straight up honest with you about that. When it comes to building webinars, this is the thing you need. Inside this toolkit, you get nine plus templates, Canva templates. These are graphic design templates for you to put together graphics for Facebook, LinkedIn, and email. Messenger invite templates. This is for Facebook Messenger. The post webinar survey template so that you can send a survey to everybody after the webinar to help you learn and get better at running webinars. A content repurposing guide. We talked a lot about that. What do I do with my content after my webinar is over? Get the guide. A webinar funnel guide. A webinar platform purchasing guide so that when you're ready to make a decision on what kind of webinar platform you're going to choose, it's going to be Demio. But when you're doing that evaluation, we've got a guide ready for you. A pre-camera checklist. So we talked a lot about what if people don't want to be on camera? We've got a checklist to help you feel confident before you get on camera and do your webinar. A promotion checklist. So we're going to talk more in that checklist about all the different ways to promote and an engagement checklist. How do we keep people engaged? Now, in order for me to give this toolkit to you, I need you to go into the poll that Thomas just listed that says, would you like to opt in to receive Demio's resources and marketing tips? I can't give this to you unless you opt in because I care about your privacy. I'm not going to spam you with stuff. That's not, that's not what I'm in for. But you asked a lot also about furthering questions. And we provide a lot of great resources around everything webinars, everything marketing. 
Thomas just executed a great call to action here. This is the way to try Demio for free. Part of your success with webinars is dependent on this platform. You're seeing the, the, the magic in real time as an attendee. So try it out for free. It costs you nothing. You do not have to enter your credit card. It's 14 day trial. You can put together your own webinar. You should invite me. I'd love to come. I'd love to learn about how your trial is going. Don't invite Ashley. She's a terrible <laughs> speaker. <laughs> no, I'm just you kidding. She's amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. Love, love, love to be in your audience for your webinars. So I, we've got uh, a bunch of people who have said yes to uh, receiving this template. So please, please, please opt in. And if you opt in, I will email this personally to you once the webinar is over. And the last gift. <clears throat> is a $15 Hop Your Lunch card just for you because you have attended uh, this amazing uh, fireside chat with, uh, with Ashley. Thank you so much again. So I'm going to share my screen to show you how uh, that all works. Give me one sec. Yes, share this uh, share. So after this event, in the next uh, few hours, you will receive an email from us with a link to access your hop your card. So as you can see, you will see a branded digital visa card. So it's, again, it's a visa card. So it will work on any vendor that, that accepts visa, but it's smart. So as an admin or as somebody who runs events, you can put different restrictions to your card. One is timing. So I have put a timing set today at noon and you have one week to use your $15. And you can also restrict where people can buy from. So here we have different vendors and we have vendors really all over the world. So I put a few vendors in North America, a few from Europe. If there is any vendor that, that you would like me to add, I can do it. And uh, so I put it for breakfast, for some drinks even, but mainly for dinner or lunch. And you even have the whole category called restaurant. So if you actually want to go and physically go to your favorite local restaurant and use your $15 to, to buy some food, you can add your hobby card to your Google Pay or your Apple Pay and, um, and use your card there. So you can, I will end by saying that you can even, you know, if you want to buy for 20 bucks or 25 bucks, you can add your personal credit card and then $15 will be charged on the card and uh, the rest on your personal card. And so one last thing is uh, if you book a call with our team today, if you want to learn more about Hopio and, and how we can, we can help you increase engagement during your virtual events, um, if you book a call before 5 p.m. today, I will go into your account and personally add $10 to your hobby card. So you'll have 25 bucks to enjoy a nice lunch or um, whatever you want. I mean, it's not only about food. It's, it's, uh, we, uh, you, can, you can also use that on Apple, Amazon. So uh, you can also use the card to get yourself a nice gift. But you can treat yourself with $25 if you book a call with us before 5 p.m. today. And so I will, so if you want to click now, I will delete it in five seconds, five, four, three, two. <laughs> I see so many people clicking. <laughs> urgency, urgency, urgency. It's such a nice marketing tactic, All right? So two, three, two, one, and it's done. But I mean, you can go to, Hopio.com, uh, it's not uh, fully done. You can go to Hopio.com or again to Demio.com if you want to sign up for a free trial. But um, I would say thank you so much, Ashley, um, for sharing these insights. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to re to rewatch um, that episode because I want to kind of you know relearn everything that that you've said and write a blog post about it, write an amazing ebook about it, snip it up into smaller uh, smaller pieces of content and then share it everywhere on our social media platforms. I think this is such a brilliant strategy.
Yes, brilliant. I'm so, so, so glad to have been here. Thank you, thank you so much. If anyone um, wants to find me on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. Happy to answer any and all questions that you might have. And I'm really excited to continue the conversation. So thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day or night or morning, wherever you might be. <laughs>